Howdy folks, Kevin here. My blanket is still here. I'm still too lazy to get up and take the blanket down just to put it back up after I'm done. Um, so it's still there, but uh, whatever. Uh, in the previous video, I'm going through three different tips you can use in WebDriver IO to write more effective tests, simpler tests, easier to manage tests, that type of thing. In the previous video, we covered credentials, how to manage different credentials. So we wanted to log into a site and that site would change depending on uh, whether you want to log into the test site or a production site, and then you would use a different login for that. So if you haven't watched that, go check that out in tip number two. And if you haven't watched tip number one, you probably want to start with that one because that's the start of this series. Anyway, this is the end of the three videos on this, and we're going to talk about uh, hidden buttons and things. So scrolling inside of elements. So let's jump into it. So I went ahead and wrote a script that goes to this URL and tries to click on the button. And what I had assumed would happen is when it loads the page, this button would actually be hidden. So it'd be somewhere down here and you can't see it. And it would throw an error because uh, you're not able to see the button. But actually what happened is that when the script ran, it scrolled to that button and you were able to click it. So that's actually not gonna be a very good example to go through because it's not actually an issue. Um, I swear it was different, but maybe there was a recent update to the way that they handled it to where it actually does handle this. All that being said, I still want to go through this tip because it may come in handy for whatever reason. And the reason that we're going to use it for is we want to take a screenshot of the page and we want the screenshot with this button showing. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do the scrolling inside of an element. Okay, so instead of using this click command, I'm going to use this save screenshot command and that's going to save a screenshot of what the page looks like and call it button.png and when I take this screenshot the first time the button's not going to be showing then I'm going to do some voodoo magic so I'll say button hidden and then here I'll do the voodoo magic to scroll to element and then we'll do another screenshot calling it button shown. So what is this uh, voodoo magic going to look like? Well, there is, as I mentioned, there is that scroll command that you have, but there isn't any other way, like in this scroll command, you can say the element you want to scroll to, but you can't say it's only going to scroll the body of the page itself. You're not actually going to, you can't say a specific element to scroll inside of. So what we need to do is write a little bit of JavaScript to run on the page to scroll itself. I'm back at the scroll bars page and I want to show you how that JavaScript is going to work. Now I've done a fair amount of research on different ways on how to scroll an element into view and uh, it started out really complex and it has gotten a lot simpler since then. Um, there's some browser support that's been added for a specific function that we'll take a look at in just a second. But first I'm going to open up my console so I'll just inspect a random element on here. And then uh, this gives me my elements page. I can switch over to console if I'd like to but then I don't have that elements anymore. So if I'm on my elements tab and I hit escape, press the escape button, it actually brings up a console for me so I can kind of use these side by side and it makes it a little bit easier to work with because I can see the HTML that's on the page. And I can even use this special dollar sign zero utility that will return whatever element I have highlighted. So if I do dollar sign zero again, it now returns the TD because I have that TD highlighted. So I can just reference dollar sign zero, and that'll give me my button. And that'd be the same as if I had done something like document query selector all, or query selector, and then pass in the CSS selector I want to use. Here it would be ID hiding button. We're going to use this query selector command in our script in just a second. But uh, for now, for testing, it's a lot easier just to do dollar sign zero with that, because you just don't have to type out nearly as much stuff. Now I mentioned it got a lot easier over recent times thanks to some new browser support. If I open up the documentation, they've got this um, documentation on scroll into view. It's a function that exists on any document element. And if we look at it, it's just element.scroll into view. You can pass in a couple options to change how it scrolls. If you want like smooth scrolling versus jumping. But the basic example is you get your element and then you just call scroll into view. Let's go ahead and do that on ours. So we've got dollar sign zero, scroll into view, and I'll move down the page just to really show this off. And bam, it's into your view. Um, this is really impressive because the alternative 
that I was looking at is something to do with there's this offset left and height and all that kind of stuff. And you have to do all these sort of sorts of calculations and then looping up to go up. And it's really quite a mess. Um, I found something that was a little bit easier using get bounding client rectangle or rect. And that returns a few dimensions about where it is on the page. And then you would have to measure it by where the parent is and do some scroll information. If you're curious, you can change the place where the element is scrolled. So my parent element here, I wanna change how far it's scrolled. So I can change scroll left. I can just set that to be zero and it'll actually scroll all the way over to the, to the side. Otherwise I can up that to something like 500 and see it moves that button in. So you can manually change that. But what I found is this scroll into view is just the perfect method for us to use and that's what we're gonna use in our script. Now, in order to run this JavaScript on our page, we need to use the execute function inside of WebDriver IO. This function allows you to inject JavaScript into the page during the execution of your test. In this instance, we'll be inserting that scroll into view function. So back in my test, I'll create a new line and I'll add browser.execute. And then into execute, I'm going to pass a function. And inside of my function is all the JavaScript that I want to run on the page. We're gonna make this a little bit more reusable later on, but just to show that this works, um, I'm gonna use document query selector, and then I'm gonna pass in that CSS selector of the button that has the ID in it. And once again, that ID is hiding button. And then with that element, I'm gonna call scroll into view. And I'll save my file, and I'm going to jump into my terminal and run my test, which is gonna be npx wdio, and then I'll pass in just the file for scrolling. Let's go ahead and open that, or run that. And you can see, maybe maybe you saw it for a brief second there, it did actually scroll over. And if I go into my finder, you can see the two images of button hidden, and then the button being shown. And again, you can actually orient this using that scroll into view function. There are some parameters you can pass in, like where you want the element to basically end in the view. So I'm not gonna mess with that, but that is something that you can definitely do. And the scroll bars, this is Mac OS X, so they kind of show and hide. If you did wanna get rid of them in case you were doing any sort of visual regression testing, you could just add a pause after your execute function so that it gives time for those scroll bars to, to disappear on operating system. Now this isn't too much to have to write every time you wanna to scroll to an element, but we could make it a little bit more reusable by moving this whole browser execute into a separate function and having you just call that function with passing in the selector you wanna do. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is copy over that function and move it outside of my test statement. Then I'm gonna wrap this function in another function called scroll into view. And that function is going to take a selector, a string selector, and then this selector is going to be, need to be passed into the browser execute. If I just pass in the selector here, this is going to fail because this JavaScript inside of this function is executed inside of the browser. It doesn't have any access to this variable. It's one of the things about the browser execute function. So we need to pass this selector into this function. And that's pretty simple. We'll just come to the end of our function and then add the selector variable here. That's gonna tell the execute function to pass this variable into this function. And then the next thing we need to do is define a parameter in the function to accept the selector itself. I call it L selector for element selector um, instead of just selector. It could be just selector, but I kinda wanna differentiate between this variable that's gonna be used inside the function and this outer variable that is used outside of the function. So I'll just update this query selector. And now it's going to take the selector passed in, run a query selector on it, and then run the scroll into view. Now for our test, to fix our test, we'll call scroll into view, and I'll pass in that string of the selector that we had saved from before. Now if I save it, I'll run my test one more time just to make sure everything is hooked up correctly. And once again, our screenshot shows the element being shown. So that worked.
just fine. If you did want to take this one step further, you could call the add command function and add this scroll into view as a command itself. It'd be pretty neat. And you could add this like in your configuration file so that you could use it from anywhere. You know, now that I think about it, I think it's simple enough for me to run this. I think I'm just going to show you how this works. So I'm going to copy over, scroll into view, pull that out. I'm going to change this to browser.scroll into view because this scroll into view is going to be a new command that I make that's part of the WebDriver IO set of commands. Now I need to add this command into the WebDriver IO knowledge base, basically. So I'm going to come over to my configuration file, scroll down to my before section. I'm going to uncomment it. And it says here at this point, you can access all variables like browser. That's perfect. It's the perfect place to define custom commands. That is exactly true. So we're going to define our custom command. I'm going to say browser.addCommand. Then I'm going to pass in a string defining what I want this command to be named. And then I'll pass in the function that I want to run with that command. You see, I have it still named scroll into view. I can just leave that there. That way, in case this errors out in any way, it will tell you that the scroll into view function is what happened, what went wrong. There's not too much of a drawback to having it named here. But the function is pretty much the same. We just pass in a whole lot of selectors here and there. And now if I save and run my test one final time, you should see that it works as expected. And if I come back to this image, it is hidden and shown as expected. And then you could even add that browser.pause here to get rid of those scroll bars. And there's one thing I will mention before finishing this video out, and that's how I wish that I could call this command using elements as a first class citizen. So I'll show you what I mean. Basically, instead of calling browser.scroll into view and then passing in the selector I want, I could actually define the element and then call scroll into view, and it would be smart enough to understand that it wants to run this scroll into view command on this element. I've looked into this a little bit and haven't found a way to really make this work. So if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. If you've had experience with this in the past, um, it would just kind of make it easier, especially if you wanted to use this with a page object. Say I have an element defined and I want to pass that into scroll into view. I can do l.selector, and that's going to get the selector defined in this element. So it'll just get that string, and it'll pass it into scroll into view. So if you have like page objects, page objects that you don't want to pull outside of your page object, if you don't want to pull the selector outside of your page object, you can pass it in that way. So that's just one way of kind of getting around the fact that I don't know how to use elements as a first class citizen with custom commands. But if you do, I would love to hear it in the comments. So that's going to wrap up the, these three tips. I hope you enjoyed these three videos. I may continue going on with these tips at a later date. I may add more. Um, so keep an eye out on the channel. If you have any tips that you've had that you'd like me to run through, I'm always open to ideas. And until next time, have fun testing.